In 1990, Christopher J. Scarborough was awaiting trial in a Wisconsin jail, accused of killing 27-year-old job trainer Stephen Lohman. It was then that the arrest of a 31-year-old Milwaukee man was announced. He had the remains of 11 men and boys in his apartment. That man later confessed to killing a total of 17 men and boys in Ohio and Wisconsin. He also confessed that he would sometimes mutilate and cannibalize his victims. Scarver came to know serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer much like the rest of America via the news. But Scarver got to see more of Dahmer than most people. Both men were convicted murderers, serving out life sentences together in the Columbia Correctional Institution outside of Madison. Although Scarver was also a convicted murderer, he couldn't stomach the things he'd heard Dahmer had done. Scarver later told the New York Post that Dahmer would antagonize inmates by making food look like severed body parts and leave them for people to find. Scarver said he kept his distance from Dahmer until 1994. Scarver claims when the two were left alone in the prison gym, he bludgeoned Dahmer to death with a metal rod. He also killed another inmate at the same time named Jesse Anderson. According to what Scarver told the New York Post, Anderson and Dahmer antagonized him, so he killed them. Scarver initially pleaded not guilty of the prison murders, claiming insanity. At his first court appearance, Scarver entered the courtroom singing. Rain or shine, sharing your dreams, your heart and your mind. But he later changed his plea to no contest. He did so in exchange for being moved to a federal prison instead of serving out his life sentences in a state penitentiary. He was sentenced to two consecutive life sentences on top of the first one. The insanity plea wasn't out of the blue. When Scarver was awaiting trial for killing Lohman in 1992, he told a psychiatrist that voices had urged him to commit that murder. Specifically, he said it was the voices of a family, a mom and a dad, a boy and a little girl. Scarver shot Lohman in the head four times, then made a manager write him a check for $3,000. He also stole the manager's credit card. Scarver went to his girlfriend's home, where hours later police found him sitting on the stoop of her apartment. He had the check, the credit card, and the gun he used in the murder in his pocket. Scarver told the psychologist he'd never been in trouble with the law or even been in a fight. He said the voices of the family told him everything was going to be all right and it was meant to happen like this. The New York Times reported that he said the voices also told him, quote, I'm the chosen one. Scarver has been in jail or prison since he was about 20 years old. According to his webpage, he was placed in solitary confinement for 18 years after killing Jeffrey Dahmer and Jesse Anderson. But he, quote, earned his way out and into a medium security prison. When he was initially arrested for murder in 1990, his girlfriend was pregnant and gave birth after Scarver was sentenced. The child was named Chris after his father, and the two maintained a relationship through letters, according to what his son told CNN in 2014. During his time behind bars, Carver became a poet and wrote a book titled The Child Left Behind, Poetry of Christopher J. Scarver. Scarver also writes short stories, musical compositions, and songs, and creates art. He's proactive in writing prison policy proposals and initiated the American Prisoner Repatriation Act. Scarver also tries to encourage his son. In part of a letter the younger Chris shared with CNN, Scarver wrote, Tough times don't last, tough people do, and you are the toughest kid I know. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.